Hi everybody, I am Lady Stars of Fire. My real name is Michelle Espinosa. And this is the weekly healing messages for March 19th through the 25th. Please forgive my voice. All of a sudden this just started with me sounding like I'm losing my voice. I don't know what's going on. Well, it probably has everything to do with the energies that are coming in. But with that being said, hello Mr. Neptune. <laughs> He always pops up when I do the videos. I don't know why. He does, and my other cat doesn't. It's like Doodle's like, no, I don't want to talk to everybody. But Neptune's all about talking to everybody. Anyway, as I get into what the video has to say this week for the weekly healing messages, I want to remind everybody, yes, Mercury is still in retrograde until the 28th. Now, that has a lot to do with the energies that have been coming in. Because like I've been saying, this is Neptune. Not Neptune. This is a Pisces season. And Pisces is all about the soul for all that it is, good or bad. It is everything that the soul is that does deal with ego. So that has to do with the cleansing out of the ego and everything that's good and bad about ourselves. With Mercury in retrograde here, it's really been kicking up some speed and kicking up some dust from old old days so to speak bringing a lot of energy back plus with Uranus moving and everything that's been kicking up things that's been happening for the last 10 years now we're approaching the spring equinox this has everything to do with balance and the equinox is moving into the time of year where the light is in the stronger part of the balance up until the equinox on the 20th we've been dealing with Technically, the darker side being in the stronger percentage of balance. This has a lot to do with all of that, you know, denial. All of the, uh, your, clo your skeletons in the closet, so to speak. That also had a lot to do with, you know, uh, your denials and your darker aspects of self in general. And, oh, no, no, you're not going to knock that down on me, baby. Um, so as we're making these shifts, we're, we're going from the darker season, you know, with the equinox coming into a complete balance of both light and dark. Excuse me, Neptune. <laughs> You're going from a complete balance of dark being in the higher percentage to both of them being in an even level and facing off and seeing each other for what they are. Your light and your dark, just like the equinox is, for a very short amount of time. And that's going to happen this week. Okay? And then it starts to move towards the light. That's what the spring equinox is all about. But you will be having that happen within yourself. Now, as I say that, let me get into the information that I'm being given from Spirit more. And then we'll walk. I'll walk you through everything and help you to understand it a little bit better. <laughs> But before I do anything else, uh, I don't know why, but right before I came in here, I am being told, well, I know why, it has to do with all the energies going on this week, I'm being told you really, really need to work on grounding yourself this week. There's so much energy kicking up and shifting, and that has to do with the equinox itself is the seed keeper of fertility, but are you using that energy right? I'm going to come back for that in just a second. I am being told by spirit, whether you believe it or not, depending on what has been happening in your life, I've said some people are further along on their path and this hasn't been such a difficult thing. It's been critiquing areas and some people have really felt like they've gotten a smackdown from the energies of what's been coming in and universally, like you've just been getting a, you know, a punch in the gut, okay, and that has to do with the Mercury retrograde and all of these energies that have been shifting, but spirit says... To remind you, the universe is on your side. Believe it or not, the universe is on your side. But at the same point, at the very same token, as far as spirit goes, they say we're not going to do the hard work for you. We're here to help you. We're here to back you up. But we will not do the job for you. And when we look at the idea of what I'm being told is the universe is on our side, it has to do with the manifestation that's going on, especially right now during the equinox as this takes place. Like I said, this is the seed keeper immersing. It is the seed keeper of fertility in general, which also means it has to do with manifestation. So 
when we get into this energy, what are we looking at? I mean, like I say, the universe is on your side, but you may not feel like it is. And I said last week, some of this might have a little bit to do with karmic energy coming in and it has to play out. Sometimes the universe is going to have its way and it has to play out. There's a bigger reason that it's not meant for you to understand. And then sometimes it quite simply is really simple. Your vibration is not high enough and you are not manifesting correctly. Like I said, they're willing to work with you and nothing is impossible once you understand how to deal with that manifestation and step out of the 3D and step out of the 3 and 4D and more into the 5, 6, 7D and so far. So far on, you know, moving on higher up into the dimensions. As you understand how to work with that, you can bring that energy back to the third dimension, which is the physical world. But a lot of us misunderstand how this manifestation works, and therefore, we are having the universe work with us. It's just not working with us the way we want it to, because we're not giving it the energy we need to give it in order for it to do so. But we don't know this, and we're not understand this, and this is what I'm trying to get out. This has to do with taming the beast. Like I said, this is the equinox this week. All of the 19th, 20th, and the 21st, you're feeling this energy as it comes into balance and it shifts from dark to light. Because we have been in the dark season and we're moving into the light season. But you, as they, as they come into complete balance, they truly are going to be facing off as we make that shift. And you will feel that inside of yourself. And I'm warning you, you're going to feel it with some of the stuff going on with astrology this week. But it can be a very positive thing. You just need to know how. To do it better and to do it more properly. So you are the seed keeper of your own immersing. I mean, you're immersing the seed keeper of the fertility within yourself to be exactly who and what you want it to be. Like I said, it's taming the beast, and I am being told all eyes are on you and spiritually manifesting with what it is that they see during this time. It's what's moving us forward. This has to do with, you know, also has to do with next month. But before I get into that, what Spirit keeps giving me is yearning and purging, yearning and purging, yearning and purging, yearning and purging. Now, I've said this Mercury retrograde had a lot of purging going on, which had to do with purification and cleansing. Okay? It doesn't always have to come out as a violent action, but a lot of times it does, depending on where you are on your path. Some people are more at critiquing. Some people really are feeling like a tidal wave is coming in at them or a tsunami is coming in at them. And that's because you're dealing with Pisces season. It's a water element. It's the final house. It's the final house of the healing and it's meant to knock you down so that the healing has to take place. Okay? Like I said, depending on where you are on your path, you may feel like you're just in the waves of the water or you've got a whole damn tsunami knocking you down and taking you out. And there's nothing wrong with where you are on your path. Your path is your path and only you can walk it and only you can clean it. Okay? Now, Spirit keeps bringing me back to yearning and purging and yearning and purging and yearning and purging. And what they're saying is, and the best way I know how to put this Yearning is wanting, needing, desiring. There's nothing wrong with that for manifestation. But where is the yearning coming from? Where is the desire and the need coming from? Because if it's coming from a negative place, even if what you're yearning for is positive, you're actually taking that manifestation and you're blocking yourself. Best way of putting it, uh, loneliness. If you're wanting, you know, that relationship in your life, if you're wanting that love in your life, but you're yearning from it, yearning for it from such a desperate place, from such a broken down pr place, from loneliness, that you are not actually have the love there to give because you are still bro broken, you are still healing, then you're technically blocking that yearning because you're giving it more of a depressive, depressive energy. You're bringing it, 
you can't bring in happiness and love when what you feel and what you send out is loneliness and isolation. This is what I'm trying to say. A lot of times we think we're manifesting, but we're actually blocking ourselves because we're not actually at the proper vibrational frequency. And the only way you can rise to it is to be authentic, to be for real with how you feel. You have to love your life if you're going to bring in love for life. And I can go out there and say and act or anybody can act like they're the happiest person in the world, or the most positive person in the world, and try to put out the positive vibes and try to be a positive influence, but if deep down inside, no matter how hard you try to be that positive influence, you're lonely, you're isolated, then the truth is still the truth. Like I said, 12th house. 12th house is going to trump everything. It is the tsunami in the water. It is the waves in the water. It's the truth of the soul. You can't manifest what you can't believe in. You can't manifest what, what, you, what you can desire it all you want. You can desire, you know, to bring this job to you. You can desire to want, to want all of these things in life. But if deep down what you put out isn't authentically true, and you're in denial and lying to yourself because maybe you are lonely or you don't believe or this or that, then you're actually blocking yourself because the truth is the truth. Okay? You have to heal what isn't working for you. This is what I mean by what seeds are you planting. This is emerging of the seed keeper right now. That has to do with that light and that dark coming into balance. And then moving into the light season. Up until the 20th, when the equinox is in its balance... And actually, the 21st, as it's starting to come into the light, we are dealing with the face-off of the light and dark from within. And the dark is really trying to just knock on the door right now, because it's at its last few moments. It's at its last few moments of heightened, of being heightened and stronger and more powerful than the light from within. This is why these things are hitting you so hard. Like I said, and this has to do with overcoming those. I told you last week in the video that they said it's from, in a form, it's from going from zero to champion. And zero was claiming your power, not claiming it. Starting to step into your power. Starting to acknowledge your power. Claiming your power is exuding it. Zero to champion. Until you start exuding it believing in it, and it's pouring out of you, that energy. You may not be truly authentic with what you are putting out. Like I said, if deep down you're lonely, deep down you feel isolated, deep down you don't believe, deep down you don't have hope, even though you're trying to talk yourself into believing it, and you're trying to be a positive person and put that energy out there, the universe sees the truth. Spirit sees the truth. Energy and manifestation knows the fucking truth. You can lie to yourself all you want. It won't help. It has to do with healing. So the only way that manifestation is going to take a 360 turn and start to plant the seeds you want is to start knowing it, believing it, and trusting in it. Okay? This is what I'm being told to give you this week. Now... I am being told also that this energy right now is kind of pulling us back in a strange way. Now, I've been saying for the last couple weeks that the energy has kind of been like, I'm going to take you here from this spot that you're at for real. And I'm just going to move you over here for a minute. And we're going we're gonna to work on this for a few minutes, you know, while Mercury's been in retrograde. And we're going to take a good look at all of this shit. And then we're going to move you back over here to where you truly are. They're giving you... A heads up, even though it don't feel like it. They're giving you a head start, even though you don't feel like it. Because this energy has to do with next month's full moon. Next month's blue full moon. Okay? So, you're prepping without even knowing. You're prepping for the energy for next month. And they're giving you 
extra credit to get it in the right direction ahead of time. So to speak. That's why I said it feels like you're being pulled out and put over here. And then you're going to be put back. And when you're put back, this has everything to do with by the time you've been put back. Approximately April 3rd is when you'll start feeling this. You should be starting to see the clarity that you do not see right now. You At this moment, while Mercury's still in retrograde, there are things over our eyes. There is illusion still in front of us. We cannot clearly see and have clarity. But they're, they're actually giving you the clarity right now. It's just you're not going to see it come to light. Equinox again until closer to, you know, April 2nd, the 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th. And the reason for that is Mercury still in retrograde, people. Mercury is your communication. Communication is overly communicating inward with you right now. And on the 28th, communication goes direct. It will no longer be in retrograde, but it will still be in shadow. So even though the equinox has put light at the higher percentage of balance, Mercury is still messing with that shit, okay? Because it's still going to be picking apart those darker aspects, giving dark one last chance at going <laughs> more or less. Okay, so this has to do with getting the proper clarity of everything you see before that full moon next month. So you can actually be projected, catapulted in the right direction, even though next month will feel like it's slowing down. It's just going to be moving forward in a healthier, positive, vibrational way if you've been doing your homework this month. Okay, and the reason I'm saying next month feels like it's going to slow down is simple. April, baby, you've got Jupiter going direct, you've got Saturn going direct, and you have, not direct, Saturn, Jupiter, and Pluto are all starting their retrograde seasons. It's taking Jupiter's abundance, higher knowledge, expansion, and coming to a dead stop, and Jupiter's going to go into meditation for a hot freaking minute. And help you figure out from inside what you need to do. It's still going to be growing. But it's growing from within. So that you can expand from within. And learn how to project it outwardly. Properly. In a more healthy way. However, as we still move forward. It will feel like it's slowing down. Saturn's going to be your rules, walls, and boundaries. Doing the very same thing. Trying to trigger where we need to readjust these things. And Pluto is bringing you into a spiritual soulful change in general because Saturn and Pluto are on top of each other so we're talking about new rules walls and boundaries for soulful spiritual reason of making change getting rid of the death decay and destruction letting go and starting up with new things and they're all going to be inwardly communicating this is very important that we're starting to get our directions set right that we started planting the proper seeds we started understanding how the seeds need to be planted by understanding where we're blocking ourselves, so we can not lie to ourselves and actually not block ourselves by creating manifestation we didn't want in the first freaking place we have to learn how to do it right and then when these go retrograde, even though we'll still be moving forward, it won't feel as speedy as the last two months have to start slowing down. And this is why they keep bringing me back to yearning and purging and yearning and purging and yearning and purging and yearning. Like I said, it's all I'm hearing, just yearning and purging and yearning and purging. Make sure that it's not coming from the depths of self in a negative way. What you're setting out. Because you may want all the right things for all the right reasons. But if deep down you don't believe that you can have them. Then you won't. It's hard to be the one of tough love. But that's what I am. I just say it the way I see it. And that's the truth. So you've got to believe in you. You've got to go from zero to champion. And know that you are. And exude it. It's not about trying to put out the right thing. It's about... Fully taking in the power of yourself and letting it just come out of your aura and everything. Exuding the champion that is so the manifestation will come to be. I am also being given with the, uh, because I've been dealing a lot with spirit this week, um, 
dealing with the equinox in general. And they are, the way Spirit puts it to me is a lot of this energy has to do with, you know, like I said, the equinox is about balance. It also has to do with the way the planet is tilted. It also has to do with the northern and, um, with the uh, with the uh, hemispheres of the brain as well as the hemispheres of the planet, it has to do with um try to find where it is with your um horizons at the points of due east or due west. Everything that happens above and below, and here in the middle because of the planet, also is happening within you. Like I said, there's there's a dew point for your east or your west dew points as to where the sun will rise, depending on where you are on the planet. This also has to do with how you are dealing with things inside of yourself. And are you rising from the east or are you rising from the west? And I say that now you take it into your own personal life and you add the energies of the east and you add the energies of the west and what they mean. Are you rising from the east or are you rising from the west? Because this has everything to do with what is going on with the equinox. Um, and where that has to do with your balance and where it has to do with your redirecting as you move forward is the way spirit is explaining it to me. But spirit directly, they scoop my brain out and they hold the right side of my brain, more or less. That's the way. I, that's the best way. I, it's, I just feel like they're just picking this whole side of my head up and they're going this side of the brain, which is the right hemisphere. And it's speaking to us as we move in to the, you know, the new direction of the light because of the equinox taking place on the 20th. It has to do with focusing on our intuition, on our verbal information, on our spiritual orientation, on focuses, no, sorry, um, responsibilities and abilities to draw the picture, responsibility for ability to draw the pictures, to see them in our mind, to envision them. Um, the imagination in general. This has to do with music. This has to do with our emotions. This has to do with our dreams. This has to do with the right side controls the left side. For me, spirit is always telling me that the right side of my body is when I, when I deal with people as a medium, the right side of my body is all the other people. The left side of my body is me. Okay, and there's a reason for that. The way I see it when I think of this is the right side is everyone else, but the left side is me. When I know I'm dealing with the hemispheres, the right side is soul, and the left side is ego. Unless I just got that wrong. But my point is, balance... You're taking ego from being the higher percentage and we're moving it to where our spiritual is coming into the higher percentage, having the higher ranking here. And it's shifting. So this is what this energy all has to do with. It has to do with finding a way to create, being creative in a positive way. It is our intuitiveness. It is our imagination. It is seeing the bigger picture. It is our emp empathicness. It has to do with insight, holistic thought, music and awareness, 3D forms. How are you going to ever bring what you want from the 5 and 6 and 7D into the 3D if you are not able to spiritually step up to it? This has to do with being in control over ego, not letting ego control you. Again, that takes me back to taming the beast. This is the energies that I'm being given for the week. I am going to go back and do astrology on a second video because it's going to be way too long. But I also want to tell you we were given Nathis for our runes this week. It is the need to determine. It is the need, determination, and endurance. It is the need of your inner fire. The finding of your inner fire. Like I said, from zero, from zero to champion. You can light the fire. You can know the fire's there. You can know how to start the fire. But until it's burning and you're exuding the energy, 
You've done nothing with it. This is what I'm saying. This is speaking to us of resistance and friction as we overcome this week and we move forward. Karmic obstacles that we must work through in order to move forward. It is warming the cold from within. Love trumps everything. I know sometimes we have some rough times in our life and it feels like it doesn't. But that's because that has to do with forgiveness and seeing the bigger picture. And we go through moments where, like I said, the tsunami feels like it's knocking us down. But if the tsunami is knocking you down, that's because it's pushing you in the right direction. So that you can make the changes that you need to. So you can step into the life you truly want and desire. This is changing stress into strength. Nothis was given to me from spirit. I did not do a own cast this week. All three of these were given to me from spirit directly. Um, this is changing every... Cha this is realizing every challenge that is set in front of us is nothing more than finding our hidden strengths. We're stepping into realizing what our hidden strengths are and moving forward. Realizing that what it is we thought we lacked and we, we didn't have within us was always there. We just had to find it. Like I said of the roar of the lion. Sometimes the lion doesn't roar because there's a problem. The, the lion doesn't always have to roar because there's a problem or because it's got to be egotistical and be the king of the jungle and let you know. Sometimes it's just the energy of, <laughs> yo, I'm here. That's all. Sometimes it's not taken the way the people think that it is, and it's misinterpreted. The roar of the lion is just owning your power, honey. Now, you also have Dagaz this week, the spirit gave me. This is speaking to us of a point of awakening, a point of enlightenment or realization. It is the sudden and unexpected the sudden and unexpected shift within our consciousness. consciousness. It is a complete change in one form or another. It is balance, realization. This is also the breakthrough. It is the inner space connecting with the outer space. It is the mastery of appearance and the power of the invisible. It is actually the completion of a cycle. It is day, dawn, and twilight. One must end for a new beginning to start. And then I am given radio. Also, and it is the ride, it is the chariot. In all intents and purposes, what I'm being told is, this is the keys to victory. Okay? Radio speaks to us of the rhythm of life. And everything has a rhythm, even if you don't understand that rhythm. It is the dance of life. It is the journey over land. It is the journey in a vehicle. Something is changing within your journey. And you're going in a new distance. It speaks to us of f focusing on matters of order and of justice. But understanding growth is only made through change and proper preparation. Experiencing of the outer world. You need to have grounded ethics and logic right now. It is the ruin of outer self-order and measured change. I'll repeat that. The ruin of outer self-order and measured change it is controlling energy according to natural law now remember honey you can learn how to manifest you can learn how to change things and make things work for you but at the same time the universe always has its plan and it will have its way so it's best to work with the energies as you move forward I love you. Check back for the astrology because I don't want to make this video so crazy long that you don't even want to watch it. Please tune in also to Other Lynn Dreams this week, every Tuesday night live at 1030. But please, you can you can subscribe and please do subscribe if you like the uh, uh, podcast show Other Lynn Dreams on FXBG Public Radio um, because we're going to be doing this this. This week's show, we're going to be doing it on the equinox in general. So it may help you make it through some of these energies. But if you enjoy chilling with me and Hill Hippie, please subscribe any place podcasts are provided because you can find us other than dreams. I love you. Bye, everybody.